During the second half of the 19th century, over 30 million Europeans left their homes in search of a better life across the Atlantic. And they all travelled by ship. Shipping had become big business as companies fought for passenger trade. This prompted a battle for supremacy of the high seas. Cunard and White Star Line competed for the market between Great Britain and New York. But newcomer White Star Line had greater success by focusing less on speed and more on the quality of the experience for the passengers. On Oceanic 2, it even offered modest luxuries to third class, such as hearty meals three times a day. In only five days, I will be in New York. I am so excited. This ship is all that it boasts. I had double helpings of liver and bacon for breakfast and no one minded, it's true. Your turn will come, dear sister, I promise. Gossip on board tells me we are heading into a price war. It can only be good for us. By the turn of the century, there were too many shipping companies fighting for the same market and profit was hard to come by. But American financier John Pierpoint Morgan saw the opportunity and merged all the smaller companies into one giant conglomerate, the International Mercantile Marine Company, or IMMC. It didn't take long for White Star Line to join them. Now this American-owned company was in a position to rule the waves, and it did, with the launch of what was known as the Big Four, Celtic, Cedric, Baltic and the Adriatic. The real beneficiaries from this battle were the passengers. The price for a crossing dropped to an all-time low. Cunard would not give up without a fight. A massive loan from the British government enabled Cunard to construct its greatest achievement, the Lusitania and Mauritania, a new standard in passenger luxury and a new world record in speed, courtesy of the highly innovative turbine engines. Battle was on again. And again, White Star Line rose to the challenge. In 1907, Bruce Ismay and Lord Pirrie sketched out plans to build three ocean liners, the size of which the world had never seen. Gigantic, later known as Britannic, Olympic, and most luxurious of all, Titanic. White Star Line had realized its dream. Titanic left for New York in April 1912. Your money arrived safely, dear sister. Although I must confess, I have not quite the amount I had before. Forgive me, but as soon as I saw Titanic in Belfast Harbour, so truly splendid, I knew at once that I could not board without investing in a new wardrobe. So, I shall not travel on her maiden voyage as we planned, but I will come in May. Many Europeans lost their lives on that maiden voyage. The inevitable rise in popularity of transatlantic flights brought the Battle of the High Seas to an end and took with it the once great iconic ships.